Hey guys, so today we're going to be looking at a game called Unity of Command. Uh, this is going to be a little let's play here. This is a game that is available on Steam. It's a turn-based strategy game that's set in World War II. Um, it's exclusively a one-player game that is scenario-based. Uh, we see here that I'm doing Army Group Center, which is the first scenario in the Operation Barbarossa campaign, which is part of the Black Turn DLC. In this campaign, I'm going to be playing as the Wehrmacht, uh, facing off against the Russians who are defending the western parts of Russia against my incursion. The objectives of this game are simple. Uh, it's timer-based, and by that I mean that you need to conquer various objectives within a set turn limit. Uh, if you go over that, it's not the end of the mission, but you'll gain less prestige uh, when you do complete the mission. And prestige is used for purchasing off-map units, for upgrading current units that are already on the board, and a variety of other tasks as well. That said, there is a maximum turn limit for the scenario itself. And if you go over that, I believe it's six turns uh, for this one. And if you go over that, that is the end of the mission. And not only is that at the end of the mission, that's the end of the campaign. Now, you can roll it back, but, you know, if you're the type that likes to do roguelikes, um, this can play out like, like a roguelike uh, very easily if you wanted to. So, we see here that I'm pushing the units on the top uh, down and trying to surround and destroy the units that he has in that pocket up there. Um, one interesting thing to note that's going on right now is you see the red and the unshaded parts of the map. Um, the unshaded parts of the map where all my troops are, that's essentially the free supply zone. Um, there are supply points on the map that are denoted, uh, can be denoted rather, by a button on the top that'll show you essentially where exactly where your supply routes are. Uh, in this case, they're in the city on the bottom left, and there's also a supply route emanating from uh, the upper left as well. So as the scenario progresses, uh, you'll see that red area being uncovered. Um, now that's a highly dynamic area in that if you cut his troops off from that supply zone, uh, they will be out of supply next turn and their effectiveness will deteriorate progressively. Uh, and the same applies in reverse. The AI is very good about using maneuver-based warfare and trying to attack your supply before he uh, goes after your hard hitters, um, which is really how you win or lose at this game. So for example, that infantry unit right there that's in the pocket, uh, if he remains in that pocket next turn he will be much more combat and effective, and I'll be able to take him out that much easier. Now that's not a huge deal, you know, it's just a, a conscript infantry unit, but when you start talking about you know, stacks of veteran heavy armor, that's a really good way to neutralize uh, one of the heavier aspects of the enemy force. Now, as I said, this is turn-based, so you're not going to be really focusing on destroying everything. Um, the big focus of this game is Blitzkrieg, uh, fairly aptly, and as a result, what you want to try to do is encircle and destroy and push fast with your fast units. The objectives for this map are set for turn 3, 4, and 5. Uh, there's a couple turn 3's, a couple turn 4's, and one turn 5. What I need to try to do is capture uh, the town in the center and the town in the bottom right here where I'm maneuvering my tubes on turn three. That's not going to be so much of a problem. I'll be able to get this town on the bottom left here that I'm moving towards probably this turn, uh, if not next turn. And I'll be able to get the center definitely by turn three, provided things don't go tits up. What's going to be a lot harder is the turn five objectives, or the turn four objectives, excuse me, um, which are both on the very far corner of the map. 
on the far right side, what I need to do is capture that town and capture that road leading off map, both by turn four. Uh, and to have really any shot at doing that, what you need to do really is push all the fast units that you have, all the tanks, all the motorized infantry, even your your horse cavalry, uh, and, and yes, there's horse cavalry, uh, up as quickly as possible. Don't engage with them, don't fight with them, uh, that's what your infantry is for. You've got more than enough infantry to be able to take down pretty much any threat that the Russians can throw at you at this point in the game. And really your, your motorized infantry and your armor is for gaining ground quickly and taking those objectives as quickly as possible. One thing you always want to be careful to do uh, is to move your units from the back to the front. Uh, you see here that's kind of what I'm doing is I'm looking for units in the back so I can guide them up towards the front and essentially gain the most ground. Um, if you just fight with your units that are already at the front, you waste movement points and you're not able to gain ground as quickly. So it's important always to be moving units from the back unless they're already, you know, tackling units that are encircled back there that may uh, threaten your supply. Which is another thing that you really need to be very careful about. If you have units uh, like, for example, that one little infantry unit that's pocketed up in the upper left there behind my guys. Um, he can actually just move freely, because I don't have him encircled. So he's going to stab down, and he's going to cut off a large swath of supply in the process, just, just him on his own. Now, granted, I can take that right back next turn, but I'm still going to need to divert infantry from that side uh, to go and chase him down rather than actually using them to fight, which is really what they need to be doing at this point in the game. So that's not something that you want to really let happen. I kind of neglected that, but I don't think it's going to come back to bite me too hard. So we see here I was able to get that bottom objective, which was one of my uh, turn two objectives on the first turn, so that's going to put me in a fairly good place down south. Um, the problem with that is that a lot of my units are pretty bunched up, um, and he's going to have a pretty easy time of boxing me in there with probably a bunch of lesser uh, and, and less numeric units. So definitely next turn, uh, creating a breakout for all those bunched units is going to be a priority for me. Uh, we see here that I'm just really trying to maximize my ground gain with all these units that are just coming in from the bottom of the map. Uh, most of them are infantry and they're not going to really be able to do much this turn. Uh, what I'm just going to try to do is get them in position so that I can take them across this river uh, next turn and get them in a position to push up on my turn three objective which is that city uh, right in the center there that's surrounded by all the in enemy units. One thing uh, that I am probably going to want to do here is put up a bridge uh, across this river down here to help all these units get across on the next turn. Otherwise, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just looking at such a bottleneck in the making right now already. Before I end the turn, uh, I do have this bombing run to use, though I'm not entirely sure where I want to put it yet. I've made fairly good gains in the north. Um, I've got a couple infantry units pocketed. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that all my units push up as far as possible. I'm kind of debating what I want to do with this motorized infantry, because I've got a lot of armor already up in the north, and I don't really need to push all uh, my fast movers up north, I should probably bring at least a couple uh, down south to help make sure that I keep uh, my timing right on that turn three objective there, that city, because if he starts defending it and is able to put up you know, a layered defense around that, that's going to be very difficult to break by turn three, uh, unless I have some hard hitters down there. So I'm pushing all these tanks in the north uh, up towards this bridge that's undefended. Uh, I don't want to try to really engage his heavy armor across a bridge that's not going to end well for me. 
um, but what I can do is take out these infantry in the north uh, and make sure that they don't cause any trouble for me in the future. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is just push all my armor down towards this undefended bridge uh, and hope that he doesn't, you know, scoot across and, and defend it next turn. I don't think I'm going to be able to get across it this turn and create a beachhead on the other side. Um, but what I'll do is, yeah, I'll use my bombing run on that layer of tanks to make sure that he can't do a whole heck of a lot to defend. And I'm going to move all my fast movers up uh, towards that side to make sure that we can create a breakout across that bridge. Um, because that's going to be absolutely critical to making sure that we have any hope at achieving our turn four objectives down here in the center. Again, one big threat that I'm looking at here is the potential of a bottleneck in case they do decide to scoot up and defend that other bridgehead. Uh, that's going to be a big problem for me. So I'm just going to make sure that all these units have expended all their available movement points. Uh, yep, I think we're good here. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and end the turn. Well, as I thought, that infantry unit did push down and cut off a little swath, so I'm going to need to devote an infantry unit to go and clean it up on that side. Yeah, and down here as well, they're going to try to pincher me in uh, and create a set of circumstances where I can't break out down there, um, or at very least delay me. Uh, they're also fortifying that center town. Oh, but in... On the bright side, I suppose, they're not really going after that bridgehead, uh, so I'm going to be able to achieve a rapid breakout up there on that side. So that's good news. So here we go with turn two. Uh, on turn two, what you want to do down here is make sure all your vehicle units uh, get up as far as possible uh, towards that center and start pushing towards those turn four objectives. Uh, if they're not moving really at full movement up until turn four, when you can finally engage with them a little bit, they're not going to get there on time, and you're going to lose out on that prestige. Uh, so if you want to go for the perfect flawless victory, uh, as I'm sure you do, what you want to do is really avoid engaging with them as much as possible. I'm kind of debating here whether I want to go sweep down south and around, or just push right up and through. Um, it would be much wiser for me, I think, to try to sweep around, but leaving those units there is going to create a supply situation should they decide, because the supplies are all on that main road there. So even if I'm able to capture the city uh, in the left center, uh, which is going to be my turn three objective, and free up that entire road to allow for my troops to push up, um, those units there are going to create a huge problem for that if they're allowed to roam freely. So I do need to commit a force to move up and wh whittle them down substantially, uh, or they're going to essentially ruin any chance that I have of being effective with my frontline units. Now with that said, there is still a very large uh, pocket of enemy armor down here in these woods that are blocking in the majority of my infantry. And infantry, uh, while it does well in wooded terrain, I mean, it's, it's, it's fighting entrenched armor. And it's also fighting entrenched armor uh, on one side across a river. So that's going to be a big problem for me. I think that I'm probably going to need to uh, push in on the side that's not governed by that river and try to sweep them out, take down their supply, whittle them down, push them into my troops on the other side, and uh, pincer them in, and just whittle them down that way. Uh, because if I commit to just a full assault on taking them down while they're entrenched in those woods, that's going to turn into a very costly and time-consuming endeavor for me. And while I do have plenty of mans here, what I don't have is plenty of time uh, so, really maximizing uh, how you use your infantry early at this point in the game, uh, making sure that you're able to 
box in his troops that will cause supply damage to you and either not fighting or trying to avoid fighting as much as possible with your heavy hitters and your fast movers which are going to be uh, your mechanized inf, your motorized inf, and your armor. These three units up here are going to create a problem for me because they're on that little inlet uh, and so crossing over that really on any side uh, is going to not only take a turn but it's also going to make my troops that much ineffective if I don't try to ford it before I uh, engage with them. Um, so I think what the best way to do this might be to bring the troops down from the north, have them sweep around uh, that little inlet there and engage them from the north rather than trying to bring these troops on, on the left hand side in. Um, so I've still got a whole bunch of inf down here uh, and there is still kind of a bottleneck going on down here. I haven't been able to dislodge uh, this armor yet, but I'm hoping to here. If I'm not able to, that's going to be a big problem for me. That's gonna essentially going to toss this whole game. I really need to find some way of taking out this armor uh, that's, that's, that's in the woods here. You know, I don't really care about my infantry at this point. And really on this map, I don't care about the infantry at all. I mean, look at the crushing volume of troops that you have available at your disposal. You can lose literally half of your infantry and still achieve all the objectives. So really fight anywhere you can, anywhere that you have any chance to do any damage whatsoever um, to the enemy at critical positions. Uh, but on, that said, you should only be fighting at those critical positions. Uh, if you are chasing, too busy chasing down his units, like I'm kind of, kind of need to do here on the left hand side to control my supply, um, that's just taking time and movement away from your troops. And those troops need to be heavily engaged at the front. Uh, those troops need to be fighting and dying at the front to dislodge his units. Uh, like this tank that's in a really, really bad position right on that supply road and needs to get clear um, by any means necessary. So if I lose whole infantry units dying to that tank, throwing themselves up so they have a chance of, uh, you know, using up its ammo, I'll do it. I'll, I'll do it in a heartbeat at this point because having that road clear is going to be the only way, the only way that you're going to be able to achieve those turn four objectives. So I did manage to clear that road up uh, there next to the town, so that's going to be very helpful. Um, and I've pretty much taken out uh, all the major resistance in and around it. There's some defenders in the town, there's a kind of heavyweight unit next to it, but I'm going to be able to whittle that down uh, next turn, no problem. So I'm looking like I'm in pretty good shape here. My next objective at this phase needs to be making sure that the road um, from the town that I'm about to conquer to my pocket of troops um, in the southern center part of the map, all, all that armor there, uh, gets connected because those troops need to stay in supply. Now I do have a supply source coming along the road uh, leading into it, but it's not going to be able to reach uh, past about eight hexes or so. Uh, into that town. So what I am going to need to do is free up the road through the center to allow supplies to track down all through the main stretch of this area. Um, and that looks like it should be achievable. All I'm going to need to do really is make sure that his armor gets pocketed and take out the infantry that's guarding uh, that road and push some troops in, push some infantry around him, and um, proceed to win, hopefully. Really the key barometer at this point for whether I'm going to be able to achieve uh, the turn four objectives is just where my units are positioned. Um, the pocket of armor and motorized inf that I have in the lower center part of the map uh, is not far up as much as I'd really like it to be at this point. And there's enough units there that they're going to be able to impede their movement uh, 
continue to impede their movement. Now they're not going to be able to beat me back, but they are going to slow me down, and that's going to present a problem as I push those in towards uh, those turn fours. I'm doing better in the north, um, but I'm still not as far up as I'd like, unless I. Oh yeah. Okay, great. So I got some. I got some pretty key uh, breakouts there, and I'm going to go ahead and move all my armor uh, up as far as possible try to make sure that uh, this road leading from the center up north is clear and secure because that's going to be my supply route for that pocket and make sure that there's nothing in the backfield here that's going to cause me grief as I continue to push those up so you see here my infantry are engaging with his uh, infantry and taking them down weakening them and destroying them and my infantry that's still mobile is moving up trying to secure that road to make sure that my units up north don't get out of supply. Uh, if they get out of supply for one turn, it's not the end of the world, though it's definitely bad. If they get out of supply for two turns, that's the end of the scenario. Uh, because at that point they are combat ineffective to the point that they cannot attack. Uh, and they're also significantly reduced in terms of their overall strength. So if they do get attacked, um, they're going to take heavy casualties. Um, but obviously if they can't attack, they, they, they can't take objectives. Uh, they can't whittle troops down, they can't do their job, which is to be uh, hitting those objectives hard and fast. So I think we're pretty much done here with this turn. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is put a bridge uh, right here to make sure that my troops can get across and hit that town uh, next turn. Uh, if I have to have them all ford that river, that's going to slow them down to the point where I might not even be able to make my team turn three objective, which is that town. Uh, so let's see what the Russians are doing here. They're, yeah, they're challenging on the north hard. So, so much for a rapid break out there. I'm, I'm going to be able to push through, but I'm, I'm worried how much that might slow me down. Uh, he's pulling his wounded units back, which is both good and bad. That means I'm going to be able to push in there pretty quick. Oh, no, but he's replacing with fresh troops. So, so much for that. And he tosses it back to me. So, okay, let's see where we're at here. He's got some fresh troops that have moved in in the north, but I'm still going to be able to take this guy out pretty easily. Uh, move these guys up and start trying to push in. Really, I'm going to need to make sure that, that not only that town tile, but also the tile that's on the road uh, just north and to the west of it also gets clear, because as I said, that, that tile is critical for movement of supplies along that road. Um, past those two tiles, then I can kind of push out along the road and box in any remaining enemy forces, but those two tiles are going to be the, the, the key points uh, for this map. So it's still just the one infantry unit uh, that's kind of down there. He's, I'll be able to take him out with, with uh, infantry that's back there. I don't need to commit anything else. But right here, I, I need to make sure that I, I, I am maximizing all of my unit moves and making sure that uh, I'm attacking with each unit and still able to pull them back or push in fresh units to continue the fright. So now that my backfield is clear, I can go ahead and just push up everything. These guys probably are never going to see any more action for the duration of this scenario, but just to create a blocking wall, uh, I want to make sure that I move all these guys up. I haven't quite captured the town, but i still got some units in the area that have some move points available. Uh, worst case scenario, I also have one motorized infantry unit that can come in and do some real damage. I think I'm going to be able to do this with just infantry though. I, I, I really need to be able to do this with just infantry. Um, that, that one enemy armor is pocketed and that other armor is not on favorable terrain so I'm going to be able to push him back and take him out pretty easily. Um, at this point I just need to make sure that I'm getting good supply control, uh, making sure that all the roads are clear, and making sure that supply can fro flow freely up to those pockets of motorized infantry and armor uh, that I have pushing at the front. 
so that they can continue to do their jobs. They're still kind of blockaded in down there, but I mean, it's just infantry. Uh, so I'm going to be able to push through them, probably just expelling the movement of one of my armor and hopefully push the others just right up and through um, because what I need to do is really get them in a position to be able to strike uh, at both of those turn four objectives next turn and looking at the map now I'm a little bit concerned that uh, I'm not going to be able to do it in the south uh, just because of where they're currently positioned as well as what's lying uh, in between them uh, and that southern objective. There's also going to be another spawn, I believe, of enemy armor uh, and infantry that comes in down there. And if it's sizable, it's going to really destroy any chance that I have of striking at the south next turn. Um, the infantry up here really at this point is just committed to cleaning up the backfield, making sure that any uh, units are either encircled or completely destroyed. Um, you know, retreating units, weakened units that aren't surrounded can still cause a lot of damage, uh, as I mentioned previously. So you want to make sure that uh, you're using that infantry to mop up. Now if I move around here and kind of flank around north, that's probably going to be my best move. Uh, I am going to need to use armor to punch a path here, Really, no matter which way I look at it. This cavalry isn't going to be able to do a whole heck of a lot. Oh, that armor got some nice breakthroughs though, so I'm going to be able to move him up uh, as well as take out that infantry and just strike directly at that town. I might even be able to get uh, that town down this turn. In fact, I probably will. Uh, yep, there we go. So I'll go ahead and push him in and through and continue to take all that terrain. Uh, I am going to need to take that little pocket of road here that's kind of winding around uh, the north of his embedded infantry. So I'll go ahead and take him out, or put him into a retreat anyway, and uh, push up the rest of my armor and motorized inf and uh, yeah, just destroy him completely. And then I'll just move up and continue driving. Uh, towards my turn fours. Having units along this road is going to make sure that um, even if they get boxed in, they don't run out of supply because the supply is actually flowing upon that road itself. And you can see here just how far most of this infantry is getting. Um, they only get really towards the center of the map. Uh, even if you push them they're only going to get about two-thirds of the way to the map by the time that turn four and five rolls around. So I'm just making sure that all these guys have moved. Um, if I can isolate those two units on the top, I'm definitely going to try to do that. Uh, I do need to push that one tank out. That's not really the way I wanted him to retreat. Uh, I'm just going to need to destroy him so I can move my guys up. But if I can isolate that remaining unit, I'll probably just do that and push along that main road. Uh, time is getting really short here, and these guys are getting pretty bogged in. I don't think that I'm going to be able to make the turn 5 objectives, unfortunately, with how far back this armor is. If I had just moved them up like I'm doing with that guy, and done that with all of them, I'd probably have a much better chance. But as it is, I'm only going to have maybe two or three combat effective units up at the front. Uh, to tackle all of those infantry, so even if I get some lucky overruns, it's it's going to be really difficult for me. One thing here that's interesting to note is that this actually does reflect the starting situation of uh, Operation Barbarossa rather well. Uh, the Russians were caught totally off guard by the opening thrusts of the German campaign. Uh, while they had some recon units up at the front, kind of keeping an eye on what the Wehrmacht was doing, they did not anticipate such a massive thrust, and they certainly did not detect the buildup of armor, uh, which was significant, and as we noted on the title screen, was divided up into three thrusts, uh, central, north, and, and south. Uh, the central push here was essentially destined for Moscow. Uh, the southern was destined for the Caucasus, 
and the northern thrust was going to be centered for Norway and uh, Leningrad. And that's really where it would stop. You know, and a lot of that you can blame on Stalin, particularly. Uh, his Stavka was informed of a buildup by way of increased radio transmissions, by way of increased overwatch uh, from Wehrmacht air patrols, and they had every reason to suspect that Russia was going to be the next step on the German campaign uh, after Poland. But Stalin really believed that he could keep Hitler at bay, and that he had in fact kept Hitler at bay uh, by dividing up Norway and by helping uh, in Czechoslovakia. Uh, just to notice real quick here that they have indeed cut off my troops in the north. That one, that one lone infantry unit got got cheeky, and he went ahead and blocked me off. So those two tank units are reduced, and whatever I think hope I had of taking my turn five objectives or my turn four objectives rather is probably going to be squashed. I don't see two out of supply reduced units breaking through that wall of infantry and actually getting there uh, unfortunately and really no matter how lucky I, I get on overruns uh, overruns by the way are a uh, metric by which if you utterly crush an opposing force there is a chance that you may actually retain some of your movement and combat points um, and so you know when you're attacking weaker infantry units with veteran armor uh, you, uh, that has a fairly good chance of happening, especially if they're in the open. Or, or if you're attacking units that are out of supply, already significantly reduced, uh, as just happened there. So where was I? So, uh, so yeah, Stalin really couldn't conceive of the idea that Hitler, uh, the leader of a nation with a, a population less than, you know, a thirtieth of, of Russia, uh, could attack him. But Hitler at that point was in a really good position. He had total control over his leadership and staff uh, and, and direct control over the military. While Stalin, on the other hand, was kind of in the process of reorganizing the Stavka uh, after what can only really be described as an inquisition of uh, military staff in the late 30s. So we see here that I'm trying to destroy that last unit that's centered up in that town. Um, I ha don't really have any units that can get there. So yeah, this is kind of what I was worried about. I didn't push up quite hard and fast enough. I'm probably going to be able to take out that one unit, but if I do that, I'm not going to be able to push on the south. So it's, it's really one or the other, I think, at this point. Yeah, I don't have anything else that can move up to assist other than my units in the south. So... I'm just going to need to take up my units, uh, my armored units that were intentioned for that other target, and yeah, they're not going to be able to do much. It's going to be one or the other, and just uh, go ahead and take that, take that one objective and get the points for that, and I'll get the other one uh, by turn five. And obviously, the other objective down in the south isn't going to be an issue by turn five either. But the one thing that Hitler had at that point really going for him more than anything was uh, medium armor. The Russians didn't really have it in mass. What they had was similar to the Polish, really, which was, you know, early generation, early 30s era tanks that were nothing more than, you know, moving machine gun pillboxes. So those probably weren't going to stand up well, uh, and in fact didn't, as, they, as he discovered rather painfully. Um, you know, they, they, they are effective anti-infantry tools, but at that point, and, you know, as, as in this point here in the campaign, infantry isn't really a factor. I'll go ahead and finish up the turn here. So next turn is going to be real easy. I'm just going to go ahead and mop up that town. Uh, I've already taken over the southern objective, so really it's just that one turn four objective that, that blocked me up. I do want to say, guys, thanks for watching uh, future Let's Plays on this series. We're going to keep talking about history a little bit focusing on the parts of history that the campaign does cover. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Every day, federal scientists are looking for new ways to kill bugs. Would you like to know more? Everyone's doing their part. Are you? 
The war effort needs your effort. At work, at home, in your community. <laughs> we now break net and take you live to Fleet Battle Station Ticonderoga, deep inside the arachnid quarantine zone, where the men and women of the Federal Armed Services prepare to attack.